Amazon gurus who don't share their mistakes are not worth following. My name is Stephen Pope and I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. One of the biggest mistakes that I made was selling on Amazon. Over time, I started losing money and the mistakes piled up. I'm gonna explain what I did so you can learn from my mistakes. I like to think of myself as an educator. I run an education company that happens to be an agency. I run an education company that happened to sell on Amazon.com. And while I was extraordinarily profitable early on, um, back in 2018 until 2021, those were probably my best years selling on Amazon myself. But this past year has been super rough for me, and it's been rough for a lot of you too. Amazon fees are going up, and it's just been hard to find the margins. Some of the products that I've been selling under my Age of Sage brand were parody tumblers like this. Unfortunately, last Black Friday, Amazon knocked down the entire category. Gone, poof, yanked, never to be seen again. So you can no longer buy parody tumblers on the Amazon platform. This affected two of my brands, Momster.com as well as Age of Sage, and I had been selling wine glasses for like a decade on the Amazon platform. And so when this happened, I started to really question, should I continue doing this? I'd been making uh, some profits, but after Black Friday, I started to hit the red. I lost over a quarter million dollars uh, following that. Some of that is due to inventory. Some of that is due to all the storage fees and all the things and challenges that hit me. I had been making a quarter million dollars a year leading up to this. So basically wiped out a year of profits and uh, unfortunately had to say goodbye to the brand. I ended up selling the brand. I put it up uh, privately, but my partner at the last second um, ended up buying it from me. And uh, he decided that it was gonna be something that he wanted to continue and without me. So I still have access to the Age of Sage brand. I'm still gonna be making content in that education framework, but I'm no longer gonna be the point person making the decisions. Here are some of the mistakes that I made. Biggest mistake that I made was picking the wrong products. And some of the products that I picked included a holster brand by the name of Holstit. And I'll pull that up on screen here so you guys can see this. Um, but essentially, I tried to create an American-made, American-manufactured holster brand. Now, the Target stands are actually pretty cool. Uh, we thought we had something really neat, and we did make a little bit of money on, the, on, on that specific stand type product. And that's why we have it at the top of the brand store. But the holsters were a total flop. We actually invented a new way to manufacture holsters in mass. The IP on this is probably worth a million dollars. However, uh, nobody bought them, so it doesn't matter, right? Like, at the end of the day, nobody cared that I sold holsters. And I was losing to Chinese sellers on Amazon who could sell at a, a lower price and not be made in America because nobody apparently cared. So that was, one of the biggest flops for me, uh, <clears throat> lots and lots of money dumped into this one. Uh, the wine glass brand has been my historical most profitable brand. This is Momster. And the wine glasses uh, like this and Mama Shark and, you know, we had thousands and thousands of units sell over the last decade and did really well with it. Um, so I had a, a really good time selling wine glasses. Um, the challenge with this one though, became when tumblers started to get big, right? I started dipping into tumblers, got a little mega pint thing going on there when the Johnny Depp trial hit. Uh, once tumblers started picking up, wine glasses crashed. Uh, and at one point I had the number one SEO slot for the term wine glass uh, for, for my social distancing wine glass. Um, I don't sell that one anymore, No, you know, thank God, nobody buys that anymore. Uh, and you'll see my storefront here is becoming decrepit. There's even a few slots that aren't filled in. Uh, and that's because Amazon took away my brand registry. Why? Because they didn't like my parody Tumblr business. And when they yanked everything last Black Friday, uh, I never got it back. So <laughs> six months later, I was like, okay, this is getting ridiculous. Uh, you know, I'm an Amazon expert selling on Amazon and failing. And I felt I was embarrassed. I still am kind of honestly, but I'm also uh, aware of the educational value in sharing mistakes like this. And I think it creates uh, some transparency and whatnot. Now, <clears throat> some of my clients might get a little concerned, you know, hey, if you can't sell on Amazon, can I? And my answer to that is yes, under certain conditions, right? Now, um, for every 10 brands that leave my Amazon guy, leave my agency, usually 47% of them 
are financially non-solvent. This is a great case example. I'm basically like that 47% of clients that leave MAG and are not financially solvent, right? So I started a soap brand. This was one of my better brands that I started uh, and did very well with this, um, selling thousands of units. However, I couldn't really break the $20 price points. Um, we do have it at 22 right now uh, because there's they're low inventory and, and it was during the process of selling. And so... Um, I don't know what my partner's gonna do with it, but the best part about it is I no longer wake up wondering what I'm gonna do with this uh, situation. So some out of stock brands, products and all that stuff. So you'll see it might go a little decrepit um, as time goes on, but we, we did tumblers, which are dead. We did soaps, uh, which are gonna continue most likely uh, following what my partner decides to do. So uh, I had uh, another big mistake I made and that was my warehouse. I decided to open up my own physical warehouse. My thought process was I've got a million dollar brand and you need a warehouse to get to five or to get to 10. It's simply not the case. Uh, and I ended up spending $27,000, 27.5 to be exact, a month in warehousing costs. That included the rental, that included the space, all of the paper and boxes, that included the physical labor to have warehouse workers go to the physical site and all of that that's included. My thought process was, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna manufacture stuff in America because I just really, really wanted to make stuff in the States. I hate China so much. I've been to China and I didn't wanna go back and I didn't wanna have to deal with the bribery, the fraud, the corruption that came with China. And, I, <clears throat> and I'm a true patriot. Like I really just wanted to make things in America. So that was my thought process. I flat out failed. And it is not possible to bring back manufacturing to the States in certain verticals, uh, unfortunately. We bought machines to do all of the etching. That was probably an okay purchase in retrospect. Um, but it, we didn't have color machines, we only had etching. And that really limited our abilities. Uh, so color definitely would have been very helpful. Um, some other options and techniques would have been helpful as well. Um, so we, we could do certain things, but we couldn't do others. And so with color on wine glasses and tumblers, it became a challenge. We did cut the soap at the warehouse, uh, and that meant we could make a new product very quickly and we could box it ourselves. Um, packaging is way more expensive than I ever thought it was going to be. Like the packaging costs more than the damn product kind of situation. And I'm just like, oh, geez, Louise. And during you know, my heyday, 2018 to 2021, when I was selling my Monster wine glasses as my primary selling um, product on Amazon, I was brown boxing it, right? Like I wasn't even packaged, I was no branding, nothing. And that's where I was getting just maximum profits. So <clears throat> the mistake I made was thinking, oh, I wanna go big. Uh, I'm making a bunch of money on the agency, you know, millions of dollars on the agency. Why can't I just put this into an Amazon product business, right? And, and to be honest, guys, just to just be super transparent about this, I never actually tried to start an agency. It was an accident. And, and my whole goal dating years back was to always build an Amazon product brand business. I'm a super introvert. I was like, ah, oh, I just want to do the FBA thing and cash it in. And that's always been my main goal. And that's why I held on for too damn long. And I'm a much better agency owner than I am a product sourcer. I'm a much better marketer than I am an operator. And knowing this skill set deficit, the difference between the two is, is, is massive, right? You have to get an A in one of three things to run a business well. Finance, marketing, operations. You don't have to get an A in all three to have a successful business. Now, when it came to the agency, I was an A plus on finance, I was an A on marketing, and at least a B plus uh, could be as much of an A minus on operations. And it went very, very well. On the Amazon product business though, I was a C minus on finance because it was, you know, well, I wasn't at first, right? Obviously I was an A when I was not, you know, spending too much money, but it became a C minus, right? I was a B plus at best on marketing the Amazon brand. I didn't, I could never crack influencers successfully. Uh, and then on operations, uh, maybe a C. And that's because going and sourcing and, and trying to build the products, I, I piled up mistake after mistake. Now, I sold it to my partner who's 
got a better grade on operations. And I think that they're going to be able to continue what we've built on the marketing front and do well on the operations side. And as to credit to my Amazon guy, my partner is still going to hire my Amazon guy to do the marketing for Age of Sage. And it was his idea. It wasn't even mine, which means if you have the operations down pat and you hire a marketer, if you're not a marketer, or vice versa, you can find the winning success on Amazon. So to recap, I paid too much money for a warehouse. I tried to invent products, and I'm not an inventor. I tried to pick the wrong products where Amazon became hostile. I just literally just got unlucky in that category. And I also ended up staying in categories that were primarily under $20. <clears throat> and there are many brands that are highly successful under $20 selling, selling single units. But the higher the unit cost above 20, the more likely the branding will help it in the long run. Right now, beauty products that are in the $50 range, way higher margin, just have to use branding to keep them going. Uh, high quality units, like one of my favorite products ever is shocks, right? I'll just pull it out of my pocket. I, I was using it today to listen to a podcast. And these shock products usually sell for about $120 a piece. I freaking love this product. Uh, the bone tech is really cool. And there's probably like 100 knockoffs by now. Uh, but I love this product because it, you know, it, it's get up and go. It's like I can, I can do anything I want to do. I can listen to podcasts, be on my phone at the same time while I'm getting some exercise, right? So big, big fan of the products. Uh, I've got like three sets of these. I, I keep one in like multiple locations so that whenever I want to get up and go, I just grab it and go. This is a great example of a product with some branding behind it that has some staying power. Now, compare that to my Tumblr business. I don't think any of my customers knew what name of brand they were purchasing. I really don't. I don't believe I had any brand staying power. And they just bought a, a, a parody cup. That was it. And the new to file customers that I acquired um, or the advertising that I would do was not based on the brand. I did test and did try TikTok and I was able to spike the Age of Sage brand term searches on Amazon.com. I was successful in doing that, but that was right before Black Friday hit and I lost my Tumblr business. And I wasn't able to figure out how to do it successfully for the soaps, even though I made a lot of video content. I, I could even show you some of the content that I got out of uh, the influencers was quite good. And so we can see things like this. Uh, and you know, this is pretty cool seeing what they did. Uh, and we got video after video, seeing the product in use, uh, you know, being able to touch it, smell it, give me some eye contact and get all of those things. I think that worked out great. And this was probably wasn't even one of the better videos, just the first one I found. Also, one of my favorite scents was the pumpkin and the apple cinnamon, big fan of those scents, right? <clears throat> but that does kind of bring in or introduce another mistake that I made. I, I tried to sell products I enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily products that you want to buy, but products that I wanted to buy. And, uh, you know, there's some ego involved in that, right? I wanted to enjoy them myself. I freaking actually do use my tumblers. I do use my soap. I very much enjoy the scents that I chose. And that's a good thing because I'm overstocked on this stuff and I get to use it for the rest of my life. I also have a lot of Christmas gifts I can give out. One of the products that I sold was my hot sauce. This hot sauce bottle um, was actually a really successful launch. About a thousand units, had great flavor, got good response rates. The problem was when I went to ship it in, I sent it like this and I didn't box it. I paid Amazon FBA money to do the prep work. So things went so far so good. They bubble wrap it. They slap on that F and SKU sticker and then put it in padded envelopes and shipped it to consumers in padded envelopes. And of course, it went exactly as you might expect. <laughs> I had 50 pictures on launch day of shattered glass and barbecue sauce all over people's mailboxes, all over their doorsteps, the envelopes, et cetera. A lot of family members and friends who had you know, participated in the launch 
asking me, what the heck, Stephen? <laughs> and at the time, I think this was probably 2018 or 19, um, I just couldn't comprehend why Amazon wouldn't ship out my glass bottles. This is a five pound bottle, by the way, in padded envelopes. And I fought and fought and fought with Amazon. I'm like, just freaking ship it out in boxes. Like, what is your problem, FBA? Could not comprehend it. But as I matured on the subject, I realized the only thing that I could do is take some extreme ownership and blame myself and ship it in a brown box. Unfortunately, I had so much road rash over this topic that I decided to shelve the product and I never reordered it. The following, um, I, I think I launched it in the fall. By the time Christmas rolled around, I, I abused the Amazon FBA shipment process and did removals and sent four packs of these to all of my clients. <laughs> it went really well, actually. The clients really loved the product. And next year, I had dozens of people asking if I was going to send more the following year. So be careful what you start doing uh, as an agency or as, as a brand owner, giving out product. People expect it the next year as well. So that was another big mistake that I made. And that was assuming Amazon had my best interest at heart. They don't. They don't care about us Amazon sellers. This has always been my personal um, <laughs> protection uh, as a business model because I was always the guy that went out to try and help Amazon sellers. Everything I did was to out to help Amazon sellers. I have um, gone through the gauntlet as an Amazon seller myself. I've made most of the mistakes. I've gone to China to learn how to source. I launched hundreds and hundreds of products, some that have made money and others that I've lost all of the profits on, right? Been through the gauntlet, done multiple categories, did gift giving, did beauty, tried holsters, which was terrible results, just terrible, terrible. And <clears throat> what kept me going in the mornings was I was, was going to give these brands to my kids someday. And I was going to name the brands after each of my kids. And I had all these trademarks and I even purchased them in advance. And I'm like still holding on to them. And I had to come to terms with that I was going to lose money doing all of this. And it was a distraction. I'd get up in the morning and I just think about it. And I just, ah, man, it just, it just ate at me. It just really ate at me. I couldn't, couldn't manage the emotional impact and toll on that. And it was taking away from me running my agency. I have 500 employees that depend upon me, right? So I decided that I had, <clears throat> I had to separate myself. I had to divorce myself from that challenge and go all in <clears throat> on educational content, all in on running an agency. I guarantee you that I'm still going to be as good of an agency owner as I was before. But now I'm, I have more energy. I have more time to take care of my people. I'm slack calling people randomly all day long and talking to them about their challenges. I've become the Wendy Rhodes, that's from The Billion Show, of my own company. I've become a business therapist. <clears throat> I'm helping my executives lose weight. We had uh, our IT director, Stephen Bruning, just posted on LinkedIn this morning that he lost 50 pounds uh, in the last half a year. Uh, and he's, the, he's not even the first person I've done this with. Uh, had another gentleman, John Aspinall, he lost 100 pounds. And I was a participant in giving them that strong encouragement. <clears throat> and in some instances, really strong encouragement, right? Like, nope, you can't do that. Yes, you got to do this. You got to go get blood work. You got you to gotta do this, this, and this. And I would grind them every single day. And I checked in with them. Like, that's the kind of coach you want in your corner when you're trying to lose 100 pounds, when you're trying to lose 50 pounds. And it made me a much better business owner uh, to spend time with my people. And as a CEO, you have to let go of things more and more as the bigger your company gets. And you have to choose where you spend your time and focus on. So my technical abilities, um, how to troubleshoot things, how to do PPC, how to do all those things are still quite good. But now I'm spending less of my day doing those technical things and more of my day managing people. So brands that, that grow up have the same challenge transition. They go from all hands on deck, do it all yourself, <clears throat> you're a solopreneur, to hiring people, to scaling and doing some of those things. <clears throat> and so those brands <clears throat> that already have really good operations, that have good sourcing, are more likely to succeed by pairing with a marketer, a la my Amazon guy, Stephen Pope, et cetera, and coming together and, and going through and doing business. I believe that selling on Amazon is the fastest wealth transfer that I've seen in my lifetime. I still feel that way. 
I also simultaneously can still criticize Amazon and all of its shitty practices, all of the FBA fees that they're adding, <clears throat> their ter terrible, terrible seller support, and many of the other challenges, margins, Chinese bribery, hacking, fraud, and all that garbage that we deal with. It's okay for me to recognize these realities and tell you <clears throat> it's still worth doing. However, <clears throat> it's not for everybody, and I'm on record for saying this for years. Amazon is not passive income. It takes a lot of freaking work. So I hope you can learn from some of the mistakes that I've made, some of the assumptions that I've made, and some of the losses that I've made. And if you do, then this video was successful. If you would help me out though, and leave a comment on this video with one thing that I've taught you myself, you'll help me out with the algorithm, be really appreciated. If you like this video, here's some other videos you might like as well. Watch these next. Thanks for watching.